The City of Menasha is pleased to present video recordings of City Council and City Committee meetings. Menasha residents and interested parties can get information about City meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents from the City website. www.menashawi.gov Expression of opinions regarding City of Menasha issues or about these broadcasts can be made by contacting the Mayor's Office, 920-967-3608. Contacting their City Alderman. Contact information appears on the City website. Or by completing the electronic feedback form on the City website. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited. Good evening. I'd like to call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could have the roll, please. Alderman Tom Grady. Here. Alderman Ted Grady. Here. Alderman Rapella. Here. Alderman Nichols. Here. Alderman Eisenach. Here. Alderman Sevnick. Here. Alderman Hammond. Here. Alderman Lewis. Here. All are present. Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> The first item on the agenda is the minutes and communications to receive. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like for us to receive minutes A through H and communications I through N. It's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? See, yep. oh. Alderman Grady. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The only discussion that's more informative would be for the Police Chief, Communications, and the new lobby hours. Can you just verify to the what what they are? I don't know if they're really changing much, but just so the public knows. Sure, thank you. So our, our new lobby hours are gonna be 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. And the exception to that will be when there's um, other significant events that are happening in the city, um, or for example, New Year's Eve, 4th of July. We'll accommodate and adjust our hours accordingly for that. Okay, thank you. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Item G is the consent agenda. Do we have a motion for the minutes? Oh, sorry. Item F, after all you guys came to have public comments, I skipped right over it. Item F is public comments. Is there anyone who'd wish to make a comment this evening? Hey, Bethany, could you hit the button? There you go. We good now? Okay. Hi, my name is Bethany Gingler. I live at 210 Water Street, and today I'd like to bring the council's, to the council's attention that the City of Menasha's Community Development Department is refusing to enforce ordinance violations. For seven years, I've lived on Water Street, and for the past three years, I've been experiencing harassment and vandalism after developer Asher Jacobson purchased the property next door. Five months ago, Asher Jacobson placed a rusty shipping container next door to my home, and the Community Development Department refuses to take any action to have it removed, despite it previously having been in another location in the city for an entire year. In October, I sat here and listened to our Community develop dire Development Director provide false information to our Zoning Board of Appeals in order to, to paint this developer in a more favorable light. We're going on two years of violations and the city refuses to take any action to rectify the issues. And it isn't just this one issue, it's repeated issues. There's a house on Water Street that now has a boarded up window. Another has had a broken kitchen chair in the front yard for weeks. Several of Asher Jacobson's properties have junk vehicles that haven't been moved in months and one that hasn't been moved in more than a year. 
The night before Thanksgiving, there were police officers searching yards at 11 p.m. and a fire truck shining a spotlight on homes on Water Street due to issues with Asher Jacobson's tenants. I've worked so hard to have a home of my own and I'm watching it fall apart before my very eyes and the people that can do something about it refuse. One of Hasher Jacobson's properties is so covered with weeds that the tenants can't even use their front door. And when I submitted a complaint about it to the city, the code enforcement specialist sent a violation letter to my own property. They can't even send a letter to the correct place. And they've taken no other steps to rectify the issue. When Jacobson began dumping his yard waste at the property line, our community development director claimed he's allowed to do that because he's trying to save an ash tree. He also claimed that he placed 15 pounds of lime down first before stacking the four feet of soaking wet grass clippings at the base of the tree. Mind you, this is the same tree that, have, that Jacobson has been spraying with Roundup twice a week and has said repeatedly that he's going to cut down. If our community development director is going to make claims that adding 15 pounds of lime and then lava mulching four feet of wet grass clippings and yard waste onto an established ash tree will do anything other than kill it, he should be required to provide evidence to back up those statements. And this issue of a lack of enforcement of violations isn't just on my street. A recent social media post in a, media, in a Menasha group included several similar comments. For example, one commenter said, you have to call the code enforcement officer and then she might do her job that we pay her to do. And another comment, they don't seem to care about enforcing anything this past year. Even when things are reported, they tell you that they are keeping an eye on it, but that doesn't mean they will do anything about it. Frustrating. These comments show that other residents are just as frustrated as me, and we want to know why our tax dollars are going to pay employees who aren't doing their job. In my free time, I direct a nonprofit organization, and in that position, I've spent three years working with local, state, and federal officials across the country to ensure enforcement of violations. But this is the first time I've encountered a city that refuses to enforce its own ordinances. And how sad that it's my own community. What I would have liked to come up here and talk to you about today would be the need for an ordinance addressing pesticide usage near waterways, considering it can lead to blue-green algae issue, issues, which we've had a significant challenge with over the past year. And it's being applied, pesticides are being applied on a bi-weekly basis to homes directly across from the Menasha Locks. Unfortunately, I've realized that until our community development department begins to address some of these violations, there's no point in creating ordinances because there's zero enforcement. Please consider addressing these issues and requiring these city employees to do their job and enforce the ordinances we have in place. Thank you for listening and for representing the city of Menasha. Sandra DeBille Taylor, 545 Broad Street. I just want to echo everything she just said. For years, I've been asking that the code enforcement specialist be returned to the police department. So citations are issued and it's an enforcement issue. Nothing has been happening with code enforcement. I'll leave it at that. I could go into detail in my neighborhood. In fact, the police last April, at Sign and Dine, when the mayor was on his way to celebrate, I pointed out to him across the street from me was a stock car with no VIN plates parked on the road. Part of his duties as mayor is to enforce the ordinances. He said, it's not my job. It comes from the top, and good thing he's not running for re-election, but community development has dropped the ball 
on code enforcement. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would wish to speak this evening? Seeing no one else, we'll move on. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to make a motion regarding the minutes? Alderman Seven. Thank you, Mayor. I want to thank those who stepped up today and made their comments. Uh, uh, I will follow up, and um, uh, and we can't really point fingers. There are issues um, where we can work together and resolve these things. So, but I will I will try to help out as much as I can, and uh, I understand your concerns both you and Sandra so um, I had an issue in my neighborhood and we did get it resolved so uh, maybe um, I can help out so anyways with that and thank you mayor I'm sorry I'm, I'm out of order but uh, at this time I'd like for us to approve the common council minutes of 11 20 23 so motion and a second is there any discussion seeing none all those in favor are there any opposed? The motion carries. Do we have a motion for the municipal property insurance renewal? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the 2024 municipal property insurance company renewal policy quote in the amount of $61,054. So a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. Item three is the Nina Menasha Fire Rescue Joint Finance and Personnel Com Com Committee recommendations. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just so, again, for the public, when there's not a lot of discussion going on, these are things that we did do in committee, and so we've kind of iron most of the things out unless there is a certain issue or I just want the public to know that. So uh, again, thank you, Mayor. Uh, at this time, it has uh, come from our committee of the Nina Menasha Fire Rescue. Uh, we're recommending that we fill four vacancies created by retirement no later than March 1st, 2024. Second. Is the motion or second? Is there any discussion? Do. Alderman Sevenick? I think it, this needs discussion. Um, if, if you could hand the mic over to the chief. And uh, in our committee, we, uh, we realize that we're having difficulties filling positions, especially in um, the fire department. It may not be so much filling the position, but getting the best candidate. And, and candidates. And so um, with these upcoming retirements, this uh, will save us money, especially in the area of overtime where a lot of us have had issues in our budgets about the overtime. So I'd like for the, our uh, chief to explain to the public uh, why we're doing this and why this is the best approach. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so in the past we started doing the hiring process or at least the interview process here in the fall, usually right around um, end of November, beginning of December. So we have completed that. Uh, the problem is, is that's when, and, and typically we would do that in spring, just before uh, filling vacancies as well. But we kind of changed our method knowing that other departments have also started moving their hiring process to late at the end of a year. And so over the last two to three years, we've really, candidates are very scarce. We're in Green Bay Fires hiring 21 candidates two times a year, and Oshkosh and Appleton are 10 to 12. Um, so the process that we have is doing it at this time, and then once they're approved to hire, we would call them now after the approval process here in December. Um, and let them know that they're hired so that 
by the time we need them in March, they're not gone somewhere. So um, we've been very lucky at being able to do that because uh, the track record is hiring our interns. The interns, I think out of the 11, I think nine of them were interns um, in our process. So typically when you call and, and if they're an intern, they'll still stick around and wait you know, the three or four months to start in, in uh, April. So we do have three retirements, um, two in January, one in the beginning of February. And so by getting the, um, the firefighters through their recruit academy, um, we'll be able to fill positions when vacations start, um, usually end of April and May, then of course through summer is when vacations are usually full on the calendar and then that's when the overtime starts. So we're hoping to get them hired, get them through their recruit academy, and then get them plugged in on a shift where the three have left vacancies. And then as far as the fourth firefighter, um, that retirement is in June, but that fourth person we plan on using to um, plug into various shifts wherever we're short until his start date happens in June. So if it looks like there's some overtime um, or shift is short in, um, in May, beginning of June, we'll be able to use that fourth person to plug him into um, filling those spots so there is less overtime. So that's the, that's the current plan. Thank you, Chief. And to me, that's the, uh, well, there's two key points. That, number one, we get the best candidate and uh, we've more or less have recruited already who those best candidates are. And then number two, the overtime pay. Um, in my opinion, throughout different departments, overtime pay has gotten out of line. And this, I thank the chief for, you know, for, I know he's heard it from me enough that uh, I'm glad that he, he has addressed the issue and this is one way of addressing it. Chief, I forgot to ask you, do we actually have confirmed letters of retirement from all four candidates? We do. I just got the fourth one okay. today. So we are all good as far as turning their letters in for their dates. Okay. And do you have a, is there a budgetary impact that the council needs to know about that this would go over budget for straight time? I know we budgeted knowing that it was a January, uh, July, June or July retirement. Yes. So they took in the I think when they went through our budget, that was part of what they, uh, the consideration, the difference between the retiring and the new firefighter, they took that was part of the budget savings or reduction mm -hmm. when we went through that process. But we had planned on hiring them as they retired. Yep. So I'm guessing that the You'll see difference some savings. from waiting from J January and February to March would offset the July, yes, June correct. And July one. Correct, yeah, because... Okay. It's like June, June 4th, so uh, that fourth retirement, so you'll, that'll, that impact will be very minor okay. if he starts by mid-May. I just so. wanted to make sure that we um, actually had letters of retirement, yes. knowing some of the history that people changed their minds. Yes, yep, we have all four. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8 0. Do we have a motion for item 4? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, our committee, the Needham and Ash Fire Rescue uh, Committee, has uh, recommended to this body, along with the Nina Council, the hiring of a fire chief uh, replacement on December 27th of this year and approve exceeding the 2023 operating budget by $1,650 to allow for continued coverage for the department to avoid a loss of insurance for the onboard chief. Is there a second? second. It's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, um, I'd like to, the chief to just, uh, I know we had a pretty good communication because I asked their HR uh, department to kind of spell it out a little differently than, than how Nina got it, but um, she did a good job. You can pass that on. And if you want to explain to the public why we had to do this. 
So in order for the new fire chief to continue coverage, leaving his old employer to um, Nina Menasha, they the city had to um, provide some insurance coverage within the last couple of days of the current year. So that cost, or uh, whatever that difference is, will be made up in 2024 by the salary between myself and the new chief. So that's where the the makeup of some of that, or all of it, um, will come from, if that makes sense. And it mainly is, is because um, we can't buy health insurance for a few days. It has to be a month, so that's how Yeah, this otherwise you wouldn't be able to get provided insurance until February. Right. Yep. And, we, and Murphy's Law, you know darn well, if you, you're not covered, something could happen, so. Anyways. Thank you, Mayor. Will the $1,650 um, be divided between the two communities based on the formula? I believe so. It'll be 60-40 then. Thank you. Roughly. Any other discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. <laughs> Motion carries, 8-0. Item five is the park and rec recommendations. Do we have a motion for item number five? Alderman Grady. Uh, thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like to approve the increasing of the seasonal slip rate at the Menasha Marina to $42 per foot with a minimum of $966. The transit slip rate to $1.50 per foot dollar 25 per foot excuse me the daily rental five dollars and fifty cents per foot for weekly rentals twenty two dollars per foot for monthly rentals while uh, following the marina minimum length policy of twenty three dollars and twenty three feet and implementing the twenty five dollar per key deposit for all renters is there a second so motion and second by Alderman Crowdy. Any di further discussion? <laughs> Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Director Sackett, I'm intrigued by the uh, implementation of a $25 key deposit for all renters. And I just want to encourage um, the department uh, and the marina to track how successful or unsuccessful um, this new policy uh, is um, personally I would like to see it a little higher a little more teeth but I understand that you're trying something new correct yeah as noted in the in the memo the way the current policy is written is that you would we would invoice them ten dollars uh, honestly like with the administrative time things like that that's just if they wouldn't return it we'd invoice them that's just seemingly not we'd rather take the money up front and have that deposit and thus we you know, not return it if they don't return the keys. $25 is consistent right now with the key deposit um, with our other facility rentals or at the senior center, things like that. So I kept it consistent, and I don't, but I don't disagree with you. So I will certainly keep some records as to how this might hopefully change the pattern. And if we do need to put um, a little bit higher fee associated with it because of the number that we're still having to make each year, we will certainly reconsider in the future. Do they keep the keys for the entire season? Correct. Okay. And that's different from... Um, a daily rental of something like the senior center. Correct. Okay, Correct. thank you. Mm -hmm. Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries, 8 0. Item I is action items. The first item is the accounts payable and payroll. Is there a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the accounts payable and payroll for the term of November 17th through November 30th in the amount of $1,195,509.59. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Did you have discussion, Alderman Nichols? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. Um, just in the interest of transparency, um, I would like to separate check number 798 
two five. Okay. And um, that is a check made out to me. It is a simple reimbursement for expenses um, experienced while I was attending the League of Municipalities conference. And I would just like to abstain from that. No problem. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing no further discussion, we have a motion to approve the accounts payable and payroll, accepting check 79825. Actually, we should do it the other way, shouldn't we? Do I need to do the, okay. Accepting that check then is what we're doing. And then we'll have a second motion for that singular check. You can just. Okay. Oh. That's not right. Is that check? Okay, so. Oh, so we'll do it this way. So this one, Alderman Nichols is ex abstaining from. And, and this is just that single check. Motion carries, 701 abstention. Okay, and then the other half of the separated motion is, is the rest of them there. Motion carries, 8-0. Item two is the Highcliff State Park Trail Corridor Feasibility Study Engineering Service Award. Do we have a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I'm prepared to make the motion, uh, but before I do that, um, would Director Sackett be willing to um, explain how we got here today. Sure, thank you. Earlier this year, the city um, applied for what is known as a TAP grant, which is a Transportation Alternative Program grant. Um, in conjunction with the Village of Harrison, we were awarded that grant, or we each were awarded that grant. Um, the next step in conducting a feasibility study, as noted here in this memo, is we put a request out for proposals from different engineering services. Um, this is different than kind of going out for bid. We were looking at qualifications of who is best qualified based on um, different experiences that they've had, how they've, if they've worked in this field before. Um, so through that process, um, KL Engineering was chosen as the, the engineering service that we're going to move forward with. Um, the next step beyond, beyond that then is you meet with the um, engineering firm that was um, selected and you have a scoping meeting. So that's when you really determine what you want included in this. So what you don't see in this, because it was a request for proposal based on qualifications, is a cost associated with that. Because we're looking strictly at their qualifications, um, we certainly do have a number in, in mind when it comes to that, but we're looking for them to take what we want as criteria included in the feasibility study and then thus determine the cost. So this is just a, simply a selection and approval of the engineering firm is what is provided right now. The next step then beyond that would be the contract for approval. As part of the Transportation Alternative Program grant, um, a resolution was approved here by the council, um, giving authorization to then move forward with that contract once we have that engineering firm solidified. And these are two separate contracts. So although there's two feasibility studies being conducted with the Village of Harrison, looking at one route and us looking at the uh, um, Highway 114 route, they're two separate contracts. They'll be with the same engineering firm, but two separate contracts. It is an 80-20 split. 80% 80 is, is covered by the DOT grant, and the other 20% is covered by the Community Foundation, so there's actually no cost with the exception of staff time to the city. Okay, so I think what I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the process 
um, the reason we don't have a dollar amount attached to this process or attached to this motion is because we are selecting an engineering firm based solely on their qualifications, not on the project. Correct. And any once we move forward, the cost of the feasibility study is covered 100% by the Transportation Alternative Program Grant. And the Community Foundation. And the Community Foundation. Correct. Thank you. With that, I will move for the approval of um, or I will move to recommend the award of the engineering services contract to KL Engineering Incorporated for the High Cliff State Park Trail Corridor Feasibility Study. It's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Alderman Sevenick? Um, has, has this gone through Harrison yet? Um, it would happen within the next week, I believe, is their timeline. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're on the same, we're on the same timeline for tomorrow. approval. <laughs> What's that? Usually they hold, I think their meetings are on Tuesdays. Yeah, I believe so. I know it's sometime soon. Okay. But Harrison wouldn't approve this contract. Correct. There's two separate contracts. Theirs is for Manitowoc Road, ours is for 114. Correct. Alderman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <laughs> He's new. I'm new, apparently. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank both of our directors uh, for your time and effort uh, to go forward with this grant process. I just really admire all of the work that you do to bring in innovative grants for us to be able to do really important projects. And I want the folks watching and the folks in the room to know uh, that our city staff work very hard and very diligently uh, to make these projects come to life and find revenue from different places, whether it's grants or collaborating with other communities. And I think that's really important to highlight. I'm very excited to see us uh, moving forward with the study to see what the next steps are with this project. Uh, I think it's really important for connectivity across Northeast Wisconsin to collaborate with other municipalities for folks in our area to be able to enjoy the outdoors and be able to get wherever they want, not just by car, because it's really important uh, to make the most of the area that we live, because we have, uh, so we have an abundance of amazing resources. Uh, so I just want to thank you for all of your work on this. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. Item K is ordinances and resolutions. We have one resolution, number 28. Is there a motion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, um, this has uh, been approved by the Board of Public Works and um, has come before us, R2823. This uh, resolution uh, is declaring a public emergency in the response to what we had happen on uh, Washington Street um, for the failed storm sewer pipe east of Washington Street. Was there a second? There's a motion and a second by Alderman Nichols. Alderman Sevenick? Yes, um, I would like, uh, I know we've talked about this on a few occasions. Um, I think on two other occasions, but uh, if Laura, if you would want to explain it one more time to the public. Certainly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Alderman Sevnick. So just to explain the reason behind having this uh, resolution here today would be for us, um, this pipe is a failed pipe, and to prevent any further failures from occurring, uh, we did have to proceed with this as an emergency repair so that we could get the ball rolling on permitting, pipe purchase, and working with contractors. So what has happened is there is a 30-inch storm sewer pipe underneath the railroad tracks east of Washington that failed, and it was noted by, during a wet weather event, that there was standing water near the track. So we've been fortunate enough that we have not gotten a significant amount of precipitation, but should we, uh, it could impact that area. Um, Annip Street and Nicolet drain through that pipe and out to the river. So there would be roads potentially impacted, the rail could fail, 
there are ramifications to not replacing it. So in order for us to proceed with an emergency repair, we require a resolution to come forth for approval. Thank you. And I just want to add, and I, you touched on it a little bit, we're kind of lucky this time of the year where we so far have not had a lot of rain in that, and the, the sooner we get to this, the, the better. It just seems like it's been a lengthy process so far, but uh, we're moving forward on that. So seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. Item L is appointments. We have one appointment this evening. If anyone would care to make a motion. Alderman Nichols beat you. Okay. Oh, I guess not. Sorry. Alderman All right. Hammond. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll make the motion for the you mayor's. Won. I did win. <laughs> um, I'll make the motion for the mayor's appointment of Dr. Andrew Dunn to the Board of Health as its city physician position effective November 20th, 2023. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Grady. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Item N is public comments. Is there anyone who wishes to comment this evening? Seeing no one, before we leave this evening, uh, this is Chief Clone's final Common Council meeting with us. Uh, <laughs> so this will be uh, the, the, I don't want to say end, but um, this will be 31 years with the city of Menasha. Um, Chief Clone started as a Menasha firefighter in 1992 before the merger. And he was promoted to aerial driver in 1996, lieutenant in 1998, and captain in 2000. Um, advanced to shift commander in 2012 and fire chief in 2016. So you've had a long and wonderful career here with us. And it kind of ended here with being fire chief of the year. And then also ISO rating one, which was something that Kevin wanted to do for a number of years. I think from the day he became chief, he's been working on that. And that's a really big honor, less than 2% of the fire departments in the country, I believe, have an ISO rating of one, which helps our our, well, it helps our community in a lot of ways, making sure that our fire department is prepared and ready to respond, but also helps with insurance ratings for our businesses and homeowners here as well. So you've had a great career here, Kevin. I appreciate everything you've done for the city and your department. And we just want to say congratulations and thank you. And I think Alderman Sevenick wants to say something yeah. as well. It's uh, been my honor to chair for a number of years the Nina Menasha Fire Rescue, but uh, on a interpersonal level with, with Kevin, Kevin knows how we first met. <laughs> I was shoveling in front of my uh, front yard and this guy comes up and he hands me a brochure for Woody Weber <laughs> and him in uh, Dunbar. Uh, introduced themselves and I think it was like their first week on the job and got to know him and um, what I really like about Kevin is what not a lot of people do and that is is that they they work their way they advance their way to their positions instead of just lateral entry um, thinking that they should have the top job right away and Kevin you've you've proven yourself um, day in and day out uh, our committee uh, is very, I mean, you're, anytime we have a question, you're right there to, to help us out. Um, your, your dedication to Menasha is uh, just outstanding and also to the city of Nina. And you've made our department and it's just so great that the one thing you really wanted to accomplish, you accomplished before you got to retire and that was uh, making our fire department one of the best in this nation. 
and as he had told us on committee, only 0.08% have that rating in the United States. 0.08, and we're up there. So thank you for that, I'm very proud of you. And I, best, I, I, I thought you had one more meeting. I had gotten you a card. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was gonna bring it at that meeting. So anyways, um, thank you very much for your long service to this community. Uh, thank you. Well, Kevin, I didn't get you a card, but I just want to <laughs> mention the fact that you were hired by my godfather, Tom Miller, who was the chief of Menasha back in the day. So the Grotti family loved the Millers, and we respect Tom. And he, when he said that, when I found out you were hired by him, I go, okay, he knows what he's going to be doing. So I really appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot tonight, Kevin, but That's we're not okay. going to have another opportunity. <laughs> no, no. But what I do want to say is, um, this city has given me everything that I have, and uh, I, I appreciate the 31 years of support. And I'll, I'll tell you the day that I I got to be fortunately one of the first interns back in. I'm gonna date myself here, but 1990. And uh, I was only gonna do one semester, but I enjoyed it so much, I enrolled and did a second semester of internship. But I can tell you the day that I left and my internship was done, I felt like I was leaving my family. So um, there was no better place to be than here. And uh, I will never, forget the people that I've been able to work with, um, the collaboration and, and things that we were able to do over the years. And um, I just enjoyed every minute um, representing the city. Um, very proud of, of the city um, and, and the fire department, of course, but it was never possible um, except for the support from, from all of you. So I appreciate that. This department's been my whole life, and um, besides my family, it's my second family here, um, but it's it's been awesome. I couldn't have asked for a better place to work, and um, I did live here for five years, so I just wanted you to know that. But um, <laughs> I and the mayor knows I support is I, I support a lot of the businesses downtown here. So, but it's been awesome. I I can't I can't even describe. Um, I'm excited about retiring, but I'm not excited about leaving the people that I'm able to work with. But I just wanted to say that because I, I don't know if I don't know if you know how appreciative of um, my opportunities that I've had here, and I've enjoyed everything everything about it. So even the bad days aren't so bad. But this has been awesome. So thank you for everything. On a little more somber note, I, I forgot to mention this evening that the guy that hired probably you, uh, Chief O'Brien, our uh, a chief passed away, and um, I'm, I want to say a few words and then ask for a moment of silence before we adjourn. Uh, he was my second fire chief, and. Uh, let me tell you, that guy, he was a leader. He really was a leader. I got to know my, more on the county board than um, his work with the city as a fire chief. And I'll just throw out one little fact just to give you the, the, an idea how um, impressive this guy was, is that he saved the tri-county area being Brown, out of Gamey in Winnebago County, a half a billion dollars, him and his committee worked very hard on the, um, our sanitary collection and our recycling that we did 
uh, we're running out of landfill in this area and they saw it as a problem and um, I think this is now going on, maybe it was 20 years ago already and I'm like 20 years, oh, half, half a billion dollars, 20 years, it happened. And I know Laura's familiar with it because I talked to, to her about it. So what an accomplishment that he did other than making our fire department, the Menasha Fire Department at the time, a wonderful fire department. So um, I think it's always important when someone of that character um, passes that we recognize that individual and take a moment of silence for him before we adjourn. Thank you. With that, Mayor, if there's no further business, I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. The City of Menasha is pleased to present video recordings of City Council and City Committee meetings. Menasha residents and interested parties can get information about City meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents from the City website www.menashawi.gov Expression of opinions regarding City of Menasha issues or about these broadcasts can be made by contacting the Mayor's office 920-967-3608 Contacting their City Alderman Contact information appears on the City website or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited.